Hey, all you Greta's and Shutez cats out there. Welcome to Unit 1, Section 6, Primary Productivity Notes. So this is on your packet, Unit 1 packet, and it starts at the top of the page where it says Primary Productivity. So here we go. Primary, pro primary productivity is the rate at which autotrophs synthesize new biomass. So very simply, how well do plants turn energy from the sun into chemical energy? So how fast are we photosynthesize? How much glucose is being produced? The quicker the photosynthesizing or the more sugar is being produced, the better the primary productivity is, which means the healthier that ecosystem is. More stuff at the bottom of the food chain, more stuff available for everybody else. So gross primary productivity is the total amount of production of biomass. Think on your paycheck when you have your gross payment or your gross total amount, that's how much money you actually made. But then we got to take stuff out for like taxes and responsible adulting things. So your gross primary productivity is the total amount of production of biomass. Your net primary productivity, so what you actually get to cash is on your paycheck, is the rate of production of biomass potentially available to consum consumers or your herbivores. So these, oh, sorry. So this is you take out whatever the plants themselves may use to keep themselves alive. So remember, plants do photosynthesis, but they also do cellular respiration. So they need to take that amount out, um, and then you see what is left for that next trophic level. So not all of the gross primary productivity goes into making biomass. Some of it is used in the autotrophs only own life processes, respiration, and this energy is ultimately lost as heat. So net primary productivity equals gross primary productivity minus respiration. This could be a very simple math problem that you could see on a test sometime. Very, very simple, but if you don't know this, it's gonna be hard to do. Moving on, units for primary productivity. Um, if, the, if it's an energy per unit area per unit time, that's gonna be joule per meter squared per year. Um, if it's in biomass, then it's um, per unit area per unit time. So grams per meter squared per year. Remember when time is involved, you're talking about rates. So make sure you're including all of those in an answer that you would give. So explain the, examine the graph, explain what it shows, including explanations of gross net primary productivity and R. So here's your gross primary productivity as the forest kind of peaks that gross primary productivity is gonna be at its max. Um, and then the net primary activity is going to also decrease just a little bit because as the forest grows, the respiration rates, as it's kind of maxing out, are gonna increase, but then level off as well. All right, factors that, next page, factors that affect primary productivity. We have things like solar radiation, how much and what kind of quality of light are we getting? Are you getting direct sunlight every day? Is it cloudy every day? Are you getting a lot of indirect sunlight? What's going on? Temperature. Usually warmer temperatures correlate to higher productivity. Think about how many more plants grow in the summer versus the winter. However, super high temperatures can denature the enzymes and then you would have a decrease in growing. Also, there could be high productivity in cold ocean waters due to the upwelling of nutrients. So this is when ocean currents bring stuff from lower in the ocean up higher, and that's gonna feed the plants, kind of like fertilization. How much CO2 is available and how much water is available. So these are all things that are gonna affect primary productivity. Continuing on with that, we also have nutrients, any compound that's required by an organism to live, grow, and reproduce. And our three big ones are nitrogen, potassium, and um, phosphorus. So keep those in mind. And then algal blooms are often caused by an oversupply of one of those things, which I've mentioned and will definitely be mentioning again over the course of this year. And last but not least, um, herbivory. Grazing by herbivores will lower productivity, just like mowing of the lawn will lower primary productivity. So if you mow your lawn like super short, then the rabbits and the deer and whoever else might eat that isn't, aren't gonna have as much to eat. Um, so if you have a lot of herbivores in an area, it's gonna lower the productivity of that area. So the most productive ecosystems are those with high temperatures, lots of water, lots of light, and lots of nutrients. So let's look at some examples. 
So we have our most productive, you have your swamps and your marshes, you have your tropical rainforest, and then down here in the aquatic ecosystems, you have your estuaries. And because I know you guys looked at the flip grids from last week's bio, uh, biome presentations, you know exactly what an estuary is. Um, our least productive ones are going to be our deserts and our tundra because um, we have very, very low water. And then the open ocean is actually not very productive um, in the grand scheme of things. So there. <clears throat> Understand that humans use waste or destroy 20 to 30% of the Earth's net, um, net primary productivity because we are goobers. Um, and we make up less than 1% of the biomass of Earth's consumers. So we're definitely having a very negative impact on the Earth in this aspect. Move me over here. Uh, marine ocean producers, we have things like algae, microalgae, and phytoplankton, 40% of the Earth's O2. So pretty much every other breath that you take in is courtesy of these little dudes and dudettes. Plants like seagrasses and various bacteria. Technically, they are cyanobacteria is a bacteria, but they've been misnamed blue-green algae for since I was in high school and before that, so for a long time now. Um, we also have chemosynthesizing archaeobacteria, which doesn't even need light. They're like the hardcore, really, really old bacteria that can make stuff without even using light. Our freshwater, move me back over here. Freshwater producers are things like algae, aquatic plants, water lilies, cattails, duckweed, and once again, bacteria, the cyanobacteria can happen in fresh or salt water. So we've got a lot of stuff going on in this picture that I wanted to show you guys, and this is on your packet. So it says, summarize what is shown in the figure below. So you can see that some light waves don't go down very deep, and then others go down much deeper. Um, so the nocturnal fish, here's the other guy down there, um, put me in the corner, um, when are nocturnal things awake? At night, good job, guys. Um, what color are you noticing all these guys are? They're red. Why? Look at this. Red light barely gets through. It's just in the most shallow. So if these guys are deeper um, and nocturnal, they're not going to show up. They're going to look dark. They're going to look gray. And so they are like the stealth ninja of the fish world and they can go around and find prey without being noticed. So that's why a lot of nocturnal fish are red because they are not seen in the darkness and then they can get whatever they're trying to eat. Um, it says coral and algae need light in order to for photosynthesis to take place. How do depth and availability of light contribute to how these organisms are distributed on the ocean floor? Photosynthesis usually works. Most things that photosynthesize are green. And look at this. Your blues and your greens can go down the deepest. So this light goes down the deepest into the water to allow as many plants on all these levels as possible to be able to photosynthesize. Um, and in some places, the water is greener than others. If you have enough algae, if you have enough cyanobacteria, they'll actually reflect that green back to you. Um, and so you're, you're seeing all the teeny tiny algae and bacteria reflecting the green back to you. So that is why that is that. And that is the end of your notes. So at this point, you've done all of your notes. You should have gotten through the entire packet for unit one. Before I go, I want to remind each and every one of you that you guys are good enough. You are smart enough and that people like you. And in case I don't see you, have a good afternoon, have a good evening, and good God, do your homework.